Happy New Year everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice number theory puzzle. We have xy squared equals zt zy, where x, y, z, t are distinct digits, x, y is a two digit number, and z, t, z, y is a four digit number. And we're going to be solving for x, y, z, and t. Great. So let's go ahead and take a look. How can we solve? We have so many unknowns. The only thing we know is that we have a two digit number whose square equals a four digit number. And we know that the four digit number has two identical digits, the thousands and the tens digits. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's see how we can solve it. First of all, I want you to notice that our two digit number ends in Y and when you square it, it ends in the same digit. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that when you look at y squared and y in mod 10, they are the same numbers. Because if you think about the last digit of a number, let's say 17, 17 is seven mod 10, because when you divide it by 10, you get a remainder of seven. Make sense? That is always the last digit. So we can safely say that y squared is congruent to y mod 10. So here's a million dollar question. How do you solve for y? And I'm going to present two different methods here because I think they're both important from a number theory standpoint. First method, if two numbers are congruent modulo anything, then we can write the following. y squared equals y plus 10k. They basically differ by a multiple of 10. Make sense? Now here we can kind of look at different values of k. For example, k is an integer and we want it to be a positive, of course, or non-negative. If k is zero, then we get y squared equals y. This gives us two solutions, which is nice, y equals zero or y equals one. This also tells us that if any number ends in zero, its square will also end in zero. And that doesn't make, that makes sense, doesn't it? Like 20 squared is 400, they both end in zero. Or if a number ends in 1, its square is also going to end in 1. That's obvious, right? What about k equals 1? Is that going to give us more solutions? Let's go ahead and find out. This gives us y squared equals y plus 10. But as you know, this equation has no integer solutions. Because remember, x, y, z, t are digits. So they are 0 through 9 integers. So this doesn't have any solutions. We're going to go ahead and try k equals 2 y squared equals y plus 20. And as you know, this has a solution, which is y equals 5. So far, we got three solutions. Let's go ahead and circle them or box them. Do you think there are more solutions? That's another million dollar question. And how can you find out? I mean, which, which of these is good? Are they all good? We're going to find out. But if you continue, let me tell you, for example, if k is equal to 3, then you're going to get y squared equals y plus 30, y plus 40, so on and so forth. You're going to realize there are no other digits that satisfy this type of equation. So we only have three possibilities. If you also think about it a little, little differently, consider all the digits through 0 through 9 and square them and then look at the last digit. You can realize these are actually the solutions. So here's a second approach to the first method. Okay, so we got y squared is congruent to y mod 10. We can actually go ahead and put everything on the same side and set it congruent to zero. Now getting zero is important because first of all, zero is easier to handle in an equation. And second, we have uh, something that's factorable on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and factor y out. Now, this is kind of like solving an equation with zero product property. This gives us y is 0 or y is 1, right? But here's the thing. Those are digits. So instead of writing congruence relations, we can directly say that, okay, y can be 0 or y can be 1. But again, another million dollar question comes up. We have a lot of million dollars for the new year that's coming up, right? And that question is, are there any other solution that might come up from here? Yes y0 and y equals 1 and y equals 0 satisfy the equation, but we can also use a particular value of y such that we can get a 0 mod 10. How? For example, you can try to get 10 or 20 or 30, 
And similarly, as you know, 20 is 5 times 4, so y equals 5 also works. Make sense? So we got three solutions as before, same idea, different ideas, maybe same solutions. Okay? Okay, great. So which of these is a good one? Or are they, are they all good? That's another question we need to answer. We have a lot of questions today. So I want you to note that 31 squared is 961. Hopefully you knew that. And 32 squared is 1024. Now, why did I write these two numbers? Because notice that this is a three-digit number, but this is a four-digit number. And we do want a four-digit number. Remember the original problem? It says xy squared, which is a two-digit number squared, is a four-digit number. So we cannot use anything 31 or less. Our answer needs to be 32 or greater. Obviously, we do know that it's not 32. 32 is not the answer. Because first of all, y cannot be 2, right? Second, you know, z is not going to be uh, 1. Well, how do we know that? Well, z can't be 1 because we have z in two places. So if z is 1, then this z is also 1. So we have to have something like this. But 1024 doesn't satisfy that. Okay, cool. So here's what we know, what we can get from here. x is greater than or equal to 3. And y is greater than or equal to 2. Make sense? Because 32 is the smallest number that satisfies this, but it's not a solution. We can safely say that y is greater than 2, but it doesn't matter. This is also fine. So y equals 5 is a must. Make sense? Because we only had three choices, 0, 1, and 5. The only one that satisfies is y equals 5. Great. So now we found y. So we can go ahead and replace y with 5 and come up with a better equation, a modified one. Now let's go ahead and expand this using the decimal system. This x5 is not x times 5 because we would write 5x. It is a two-digit number. So we can write it as 10x plus 5 because x is the tens digit. Square it. And this number can be written as 1000z plus 100t plus 10z plus 5. Nice. Now let's go ahead and do this. These two are like terms and we can expand the square 100x squared plus 100x plus 25 equals 1010z plus, this should be a t by the way, I don't know, it kind of looks like a z to me, but be careful, plus 5. Now you might be thinking, okay, how am I going to simplify this? One thing we need to do, we need to put this 5 on the left so that we can subtract and then simplify. Here's how it goes. 100x squared plus 100x plus 20 equals 1010z plus 100t. Now notice that everything is divisible by 10. Not by 20. I was thinking about 20 first, but 1010 is not divisible by 20. So we're going to divide everything by 10. 10x squared plus 10x plus 2 equals 101z plus 10t. Nice. What is the next thing? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and try different options. What are those options? Well, here's one thing I want you to um, keep in mind. While solving diophantine equations like these, we use modular arithmetic a lot. And we're going to use it one more time. And what is that? Notice that this number, this number, and that number are all divisible by 10. That kind of tells me what happens if I mod 10 on both sides? Well, this is going to be 0, this is going to be 0, this is going to be 0, and this is going to be 1z. Make sense? So mod 10, 1z is congruent to 2, right? And I can write the mod 10 here. Or I can just say z is congruent to 2 mod 10. But wait a minute. z is a digit. So z must be 2. There's no other option. Obviously, it can't be 12. It can't be 22 or anything else. Z must be 2. Great. The, we're kind of solving this problem little by little, right? What's the next thing? Replacing Z with 2. That's going to give us a great advantage because notice, if you plug in 2 for Z, you get 202 plus 10T. And by subtracting the 2 from both sides, you're going to get a great number or great result. 
because now everything is divisible by 10. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we keep plugging in and things become divisible. Of course, that's how the problem is solved. So this is going to give me t, t plus 20. Now here's the next thing you need to think about. x times 1 more than x equals t plus 20. Okay, great. But how am I going to find uh, the x or uh, t values? Because I have two variables, right? Well, at this point, I think it's okay to do a little bit of trial and error. And that could be something that goes like this. Can I get a number greater than 20? Maybe t is 0. So let's say greater or equal to 20 by multiplying two consecutive integers. Good question. 3 times 4 is 12. It's not going to work. 4 times 5 is 20. So t can be 0. Yay. Is that going to work? Absolutely. So x equals 4, t equals 0 definitely works, along with y equals 5. And what was the other number? x, y, z, t, yes. And z was 2, remember? This gives us something like this. 45 squared equals 2025. And guess what? That's a true statement. And this brings us to the end of this video. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye. Happy New Year.